Hey, everybody, and welcome to the third installment of our brand new baseball series presented by State Farm right here on OpenSports.com. Today, we're going down on the farm to check in on some of the biggest prospects that are just chomping on the bit to get to the big show. And here to help us out with our prospect watch is Lou Blassi of InsiderBaseball.com, one of the best baseball sites out there. Be sure to check it out. Lou, how are you, pal? I'm good today. Thanks for the invitation, Sid. OpenSports.com, what a treat. It was on my bookmark uh, before uh, Jason gave me a call to come on the show today. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, excellent. So let's get right to, uh, right to it here, Lou. People want to hear what's going on down there. It's pretty clear, Lou, that David Price and Matt Wieters are the top two prospects out there right now. But is there one that's cut and dry above the other? Well, well, the two of them are cut and dry above the rest of the class. You're right there. They're interesting because they're interesting baseball prospect types. David Price is the holy grail. He's a, a big, tall, power left-handed pitcher, and uh, that, that's what everyone's out looking for. Matt Wieters, on the other hand, uh, I like to call him the total package because he is a switch hitting offensive shortstop who can actually put, I mean, a switch hitting catcher who can actually play the position. Kind of rare. You don't even look for those guys because you don't expect to see them. Uh, it's hard. It's comparing apples and dump trucks. You get a great pitcher in David Price. He pitched very well in his uh, short stint, 14 innings with Tampa Bay last year. Uh, he's an ace. He's an ace in the making. I don't think there's any doubt about that, barring injury, of course. And Matt Wieders is a perennial all star. You know, I'd have a hard time choosing between the two at this point. That's fair. Okay, uh, who's going to get the call up first, though, this year and make the biggest impact early on? Uh, another tough call. They're down in the minors for different reasons. I think Tampa Bay is going to be, uh, they're going to be patient. They, uh, they have a pretty good ball club. They don't have to rush David Price up there. They're going to allow him to work on some things that he needs to work on in AAA, which is the sequence pitchers and sequence, uh, and pitching sequences against hitters two or three times when he face, faces them two or three times. They get to hold him out a little bit, which means he doesn't see Boston, he doesn't see Yankee, the Yankees. Uh, one or two less times, that gives them less of a look at him. They want to keep his innings pitched down this year. He really isn't strung out to, to pitch 200 plus innings. They want to keep him at 175. So they're going to keep him down there for a while. He's still got some stuff to work on. You, you look at the numbers, he may, may look like he's struggling, but it's not as bad as it looks. Uh, his strand rate on base runners is only 65%. It should be 70 and above. That ERA would be down around 350, 375 if he was just having normal luck with base runners. He's just walking a lot of guys, which he's done at AAA. Uh, I'm not sure why that is. When he went up to the majors last year, he cut his walks in half. He's capable of doing it. Maybe he's working on a pitch down there. We don't know. I don't think the struggles are as bad as the numbers look. Matt Wieters has to learn the position. Offensively, he's ready to go. He needs to learn how to handle pitchers. He needs to learn how to see batters and, and see the way they should be approached. And again, sequencing them through their at-bat and sequencing them to, through two or three at-bats. That's going to take a little bit to come on. He, he's a terrific offensive player, though. He's going to hit 300, 20-plus homers, maybe 25, drive in 90. Switch hitting catcher, you'll take that every day. I, I think Matt, if, if you stick a gun to my head, Matt Wieters comes up first, but it's a toss-up. All right, Lou, let's stay inside the AL East. The Boston Red Sox have two blue chip pitchers waiting in the wings. Already gotten a glimpse of Clay Buckle, a no-hitter in his second career start back in 2007. And now Daniel Barr just got the call the other night. Is he the heir apparent to Papelbon in Boston? And what's been the holdup so far for Clay Buckholz? Well, Bard could be the heir apparent to Papelbon, and, and this is where if you have MLB TV or if you have extra innings, this is where this really pays off. Check in on the Red Sox, they're on the West Coast now. Check in on the Red Sox in the late innings and try to get a look at Daniel Bard. He is fun to watch. Uh, he was hitting 98 on the gun in Anaheim uh, in his first appearance on Wednesday, 97-98. That gun's a little slow. Red Sox scouts and other scouts had him at 99. He can throw 100. But it's the way he does it. He's extremely effortless. You watch him throw the ball, and it's hard to believe the thing is coming out 98, 99. He's, he's just fun to watch, and you should really go out of your way to see him. He's got a, he's got a good, hard sinker that is 6 or 8 miles per hour below his fastball, but it's still coming in at 91. So it's a good, hard, heavy sinker. Uh, he might be the heir apparent to Jonathan Papelbon because Jonathan Papelbon does not want to sign a long-term contract. And I, it's not a money thing. It, it's, it's kind of a personality thing with Jonathan. And so in two years, if Daniel Bard has shown he's capable of taking the job, if the contract situation becomes unwieldy for the Red Sox, they may make the change. They like Jonathan Papelbon. He's still effective. Um, but the way Jonathan is, attract, is, is attacking his contract situations and his career situations, Two years may be the right time. Daniel Bob's going to pitch the eighth for them up until that point, and then we'll see. 
Rock Colts, it's a numbers game. Uh, the Red Sox rotation is pretty well stocked. Uh, it, you might have seen him a little earlier if Brad Penny con- continued to struggle, and Brad Penny's results haven't quite been there yet, but he's pitched well his last two or three outings. Remember, John Smoltz is coming sometime soon. Even with Dice K out, the Red Sox are pretty well stocked at starting pitcher. They're not in a rush to get Clay Buckholz there. He's been great in Triple A, 103 ERA, opponents hitting 139, offering him a sub one whip. Uh, he's ready to go. Uh, the Red Sox are just r- ridiculously deep at starting pitcher. Uh, fair enough. Now, more big arms here, Lou. We've got Tommy Hansen waiting patiently in the wings for the Atlanta Braves, a big young lefty by the name of Madison Bumgarner in the Giants system. And his future battery mate, Buster Posey out of Florida State, not too shabby either. Tell me about some of these guys. Right, I'll tell you about Hanson first because he's making a lie out of me all, all the way along the way. If, if you saw Tommy Hanson and didn't have the resume, if he didn't have the numbers, if he didn't know what he'd done, you wouldn't be terribly impressed. Uh, you know, low 90s fastball, he's got a decent curve, a good change, but nothing wows you. He doesn't look like he has an out pitch, but he's a typical Braves pitcher. He hits his locations, he shaves a bit off his fastball, shaves a bit off his curve, so it looks like two or three or four different pitchers, hits his location. He's bigger than the sum of his stuff parts. And I keep saying, you know, I'm not seeing where the results are coming from in terms of actually watching him pitch, but he keeps doing it. This guy is going to be, uh, you know, uh, maybe a right-handed Tom Glavin. Uh, he's just going to be very effective. He's in the perfect organization. I'd have much less confidence in him if he weren't pitching in the Braves organization. They'll make the most out of him. I, don't, I still don't think he's a number one. I think he's a good two. But, you know, he's been making a liar out of me. It's outing after outing. So talk to me in August again, and I'll see if I change my mind on whether he can be a number one. Uh, Bob Gardner, he's, both of these are interesting prospects from a development standpoint. Uh, Bob Gardner last year, they brought him in after drafting him, and they started playing with his mechanics, and I can see why, because his mechanics aren't typical or prototypical. And he really struggled with the changes they were trying to make with him. It was kind of a, uh, you know, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. And after a while, they just kind of abandoned it. If you, if you have a son, my 10-year-old, they keep trying to show him how to pitch and hit, and you get in his head and you start mixing him up, and finally you just say, forget everything I've said and just go throw the ball. That's what they did with Bum in that last year, and all he did after that was post an 090 ERA over his last 21 starts last year. He's gone back to his high school motion and mechanics. He had one of the most impressive minor league, system, minor league stat lines you could, you could see last year. He's a terrific prospect. Uh, he needs to develop secondary pitchers. Up to this point, he hasn't been pressed to do so. He's been going with his fastball, and that's about it. His curve is marginal. They're trying to install a slider. Uh, he just hasn't been asked to make adjustments and do any, anything except challenge hitters. As the hitters get better, he's going to need to come up with those secondary pitchers, and that's what they're going to be working on in AA uh, for the rest of this season. Buster Posey, another interesting uh, prospect. He was a shortstop in college, uh, probably just a middle of the draft, uh, you know, good offensive college player type of draft pick until his coach said to him and said, hey, what kind of a catcher? Can you give it a shot? He did. He became the best catcher in college, became a high draft pick. He's a, he's a very good defensive catcher. He's a smart baseball player. He's picking up the position well, already offensively capable of playing the majors. Again, he's got to learn the position. He's got to learn how to handle pitchers and sequence pitchers. May not have a ton of power. Going to be a good contact uh, power catcher, but uh, two very good prospects. And if you live in the Northeast here, you're going to get to see him in Norwich for the rest of the season, I think. All right, one more minute to go here, Lou. Quickly, how about Fernando Martinez? Met fans right now, not sure about the future of that outfield. What is the future for Fernando with the New York Mets? Well, I, you know, like you, I've been a fan of Fernando since almost before he could shave. Uh, he's going to have to force his way into the Mets outfield. He's still young. He's only 21. But I'm kind of worried because he's looking like the ultimate tweener to me at this point. He's not compelling enough defensively to play center field where his offense would be above the curve. He's going to probably move to a corner position eventually, and we've already dropped his speed capabilities. I don't think he's going to be a double-digit steal guy in the majors. He's just not showing it. We thought he'd be a 30-homer guy in the majors, but he's not hitting homers yet. Again, he's young, and he's still playing a year above his level. He shouldn't be, He's a year ahead of his progress curve, but he's seen a lot of professional at-bats. He's going to show me more, and with the Mets being a big team and able to buy in some outfielders and do what they need to do, and they, obviously they have Beltran, and, and they, they don't need to develop from the farm system. He's going to have to force them uh, to get into the lineup. He's going to have to start knocking on the door. He hasn't stepped up and done that yet. I'm not sure we see him at all this year. Maybe a September call-up. 
All right, Lou Blasi, fantastic job, Lou. I want to thank you so much for stopping by this morning for our very first ever look down on the farm. Thank you so much, pal. Thanks, and good to talk to you. You too, pal. Baseballinsider.com. That's where you see Lou's work each and every day. That'll do it for our inaugural edition of Down on the Farm, presented by our good friends at State Farm. I'm Sid Rosenberg. Be sure to come back Monday for insurance runs right here at opensports.com. The future of sports on the web is open.